Do you know that around 466 million people worldwide have disabling hearing loss and 34 million of these are children? It is estimated that by 2050 over 900 million people will have disabling hearing loss. Hearing loss may result from genetic causes, complications at birth, certain infectious diseases, chronic ear infections, the use of particular drugs, exposure to excessive noise and aging. 60% of childhood hearing loss is due to preventable causes. Dear friends and fellows, 1.1 billion young people aged between 12 to 35 years are at risk of hearing loss due to exposure to noise in recreational settings. Unaddressed hearing loss poses an annual global cost of 750 billion US dollars. Interventions to prevent, identify and address hearing loss are cost effective and can bring great benefit to individuals. People with hearing loss benefit from early identification, use of hearing aids, cochlear implants and other assistive devices, captioning and sign language, and other forms of educational and social support. If you must raise your voice to speak with someone only three feet away, you are in high hazardous noise level. But remember, it is 100% preventable. Welcome to HSC tutorial. Today we will discuss about the exposure of noise at work, how to prevent workers from hearing loss. I'm your host, Javed, and you are watching Safety First. If you are new on this channel, kindly subscribe the channel and press the bell icon. If you find the video informative, then like, comment, and share with your friends. First of all, let us discuss the contents of this noise at work presentation. It includes what is noise? What is sound? How do we hear? Effects of noise on humans, animals, and the environment. The law, noise at work regulations 1989. The control of noise at work regulations 2005. Causes of noise pollution. Disease is caused by noise pollution. Signs of temporary and permanently hearing loss. How do we measure the noise? Control strategies against noise pollution. Types of hearing protection devices and the advantages and disadvantages of hearing personal protective equipment. Means protective devices against noise. Let us discuss now what is noise. Noise is simply unwanted sound by product of many industrial processes. For example, operating machinery. Exposure to high levels of noise may lead to hearing loss and other harmful health effects. One person's music could be another's noise. The ear doesn't differentiate between noise and the sound. But the brain does. Dear friends and fellows, noise have short-term and long-term effects. Short-term effects include annoy and disturb. And the long-term effects, deafness, tinnitus, and noise-induced hearing loss, NIHL. Do you know the typical noise levels? Noise is measured in dB or decibels, 0 dB, threshold of hearing, 20 dB, very quiet room, 40 dB, normally quiet room, 60 dB, comfortable conversational level, 80 dB, loud, typical factory background, 100 dB, very loud, 120 dB, extremely loud, and 140 dB, threshold of pain. Remember that a doubling in sound 
represents an increase of only 3 dB let us discuss now what is sound the sensation produced via the ear results from fluctuations in air pressure caused by vibrating air molecules the source of sound vibrates and creates a sound pressure wave a sound wave is a pressure wave regions of high compressions and low pressure rarefactions are established as the result of vibrations of the sound source do you know the characteristics of sound these are four in number amplitude the objective loudness subjective frequency pitch and intensity energy transported dear friends and fellows sound is like ripples on a pond sound pressure wave you can easily understand indicates how the sound wave work a sound wave created by a vibrating object the vocal cords a guitar string a machine traffic or the diaphragm of a radio speaker air moves back and forth the frequency of a wave if a particle of air undergoes thousand vibrations in 2 seconds then the frequency of a wave is 500 vibrations per second the unit of frequency is the hertz abbreviated h z where one hertz is equal to one vibration per second the human ear defects ranges between approximately 20 hertz to 20000 hertz any sound less than 20 hertz is known as infrasound and any sound above 20000 hertz is called ultrasound do you know how do we hear the sound through the ear and ear have three portions the outer ear the middle ear and the inner ear the outer ear collects and channels sound to the middle ear the middle ear transforms the energy of the sound wave into internal vibrations via a bone structure and the inner ear transform these vibrations into nerve impulses which can be transmitted to the brain this is a very short description how the sound and the ear works do you know the anatomy of the ear you can easily understand through this slide the outer ear ear drum the ear bones semi circular canals and the cochlea the outer ear collects sound waves the waves hits the ear drum and causes it to vibrate the vibrations are sent to the ear bones to the cochlea and this is the way how the ear work let us discuss the portions of ear in detail first of all the outer ear the outer ear consists of an ear flap and an ear canal the ear flap protects the middle ear and ear drum it also channels sound waves to the ear drum sound is still a sound pressure wave at the ear drum the wave converts into the vibrations this is the function of the outer ear the middle ear an ear drum a membrane which connects to the hammer three tiny interconnected bones hammer anvil and stirrup acts as levers to amplify the sound wave the stirrup concentrates sound wave by 15 this enhances our ability of hear faint sound let us discuss now what is the function of middle ear the eustachian tube connects the middle ear via a tube to the mouth it allows for the equalization of pressure within the air filled cavities when clogged for example during a cold the ear cavity is unable to equalize pressure of or leads to air aches and other pains the stirrup transmits vibrations to the inner ear via the oval window the inner ear full of a water like fluid the stirrup creates a wave within this fluid 
the inner ear consists of the cochlea, the semicircular canals, and the auditory nerve. The fluid and nerve cells of the semicircular canals provide no role in the task of hearing. They serve as accelerometers for detecting accelerated movements and assist in the task of maintaining balance. This is the way how the different portions of the ear works, the inner ear, the outer ear, and the middle ear. Let us discuss now what is the cochlea. It is a snail-shaped organ lined with over 20,000 ear-like nerve cells. These nerve cells differ in length by minuscule amounts. They have different degrees of resiliency to the fluid. The air-like nerve cells are set in motion by the waves. Each hair cell has a natural sensitivity to a particular frequency of vibration. When the wave matches the natural frequency of the nerve cell, an electrical impulse is released, which passes along the auditory nerve to the brain. The brain then interprets the qualities of the sound upon reception of these electric nerve impulses. Dear friends and fellows, you are watching Safety First. Today we are discussing about the occupational noise at work. Let us understand now the measurement of noise. Noise is measured in decibels. Humans have very sensitive ears. The lowest sound corresponds to the displacement of air particles by one billionth of a centimeter, known as the threshold of hearing the most intense sound, which the ear can detect without suffering any damage. More than one billion times more intense, known as the threshold of pain. Since the range of intensities is so large, a scale based on multiples of 10 is used, known as a logarithmic scale. The scale of measuring intensity is the decibel scale. Decibels are written as dB. This slide is about the measurement of noise. This is very interesting and this need to be memorized by all people. Those are involved in noise measurement. Dear friends and fellows, the threshold of hearing is assigned a sound level of zero decibels, abbreviated zero dB. A sound which is 10 times more intense, is assigned a sound level of 10 dB. A sound which is 100 times more intense assigned a sound level of 20 dB. A sound which is 1000 times more intense is assigned a sound level of 30 dB. A sound which is 10,000 times more intense is assigned a sound level of 40 dB. This scale is based on powers or multiples of 10. And this needs to be understood by all those who are involved in noise measurement. We'll discuss different sources of sound and we will check the intensity level. For example, rustling leaves, the intensity level is 10 dB. Whisper, 20 dB. Normal conversation, 60 dB, busy street traffic, 70 dB, vacuum cleaner, 80 dB, walkman at maximum level, 100 dB, front rows of rock concert, 110 dB, threshold of pain, TOP, 130 dB, military jet takeoff, 140 dB, and instant perforation of eardrum, 160 decibels. Remember that a doubling in sound represents an increase of only 3 dB. Dear friends and fellows, after discussing the different noise levels and the intensity scales, let us discover the causes of noise pollution. The major causes of noise pollution are poor urban planning, sounds from motor vehicles, Sounds from musical instruments, car 
horns and alarms office equipment factory machinery construction work barking animals appliances audio instruments loud speakers and noise created by people these are the different causes of noise pollution do you know the effects on human hearing impairment interference with spoken communication decrease in efficiency lack of concentration fatigue sleep disturbances cardiovascular disturbances dear friends and fellows you are watching 51st and today our hsc tutorial topic is noise at work what are the sources of noise at work and what are the precautionary measures and how we can reduce noise induced hearing loss do you know the diseases caused by noise pollution high blood pressure heart attack cancer asthma coughing wheezing deafness annoyance stress reduced lung development bronchitis insomnia in this slide you can see the impacts and effects of noise on human body the list of noise effects on human prolong to disturbance in mental health impaired task performance negative social behavior and annoyance reactions abortions abnormal fetuses temporary or permanent deafness hormone imbalance chronic stress panic and escape behavior abandonment of offspring injury and loudness of interspecies communication let us discuss now the effects of noise on environment the effects of noise on environment are breakage of earth barrier poor quality of crops damage to buildings bridges and monuments and weakens the edifice of building noise have also adverse effects on animals the effects of noise pollution on animals are damage to nervous system altering pre predator detection creates problems in navigation they become dangerous and attacking raise metabolism reduction of usable habitat death of certain species genetic and evolutionary problems what is the result of noise exposure it is hearing loss the ear can be easily damaged by medical conditions accidents drugs congenital conditions social activities and prolonged exposure to high noise levels workers at risk of hearing damage usually by metal work construction quarrying steel works mining or noisy industries exposure above 90 dba is likely to cause damage this is known as noise induced hearing loss nihl there may be chronic nihl noise induced hearing loss damage is caused to the sensitive cells in the cochlea it occurs gradually from exposure to less intense noise level noise induced hearing loss associated with exposure to high intensity continuous noise the amount of sound that is capable of producing cochlear damage and subsequent hearing loss is based upon the equal energy concept that's why it is the total sound energy delivered to the cochlea that is relevant in predicting injury and hearing loss both an intense sound presented to the ear for a short period and a less intense sound that is presented for a longer period will produce equal damage to the inner ear do you know the chronic noise induced hearing loss nihl 
has two phases tts temporary threshold shift the first stage brief hearing loss ringing in the ear it is completely resolves after a period of rest auditory fatigue most studies indicate that no sensory cell damage occurs after repeated exposure to noises a permanent threshold shift pts will occur do you know what is pts this is the second stage of chronic nihl noise induced hearing loss an irreversible increase in hearing threshold and irreversible hair cell damage once you have it it is too late sufferers report difficulty in understanding speech rather than hearing speech particularly noticeable in environments with significant background noise even people with quiet jobs may suffer such non occupational noise induced hearing loss is also called socio ecosis sources of non occupational noise may include gunfire loud music open vehicles and power tools let us discuss now what the law says for noise at work first of all we will discuss noise at work regulation 1989 it places responsibilities on employers employees and people who make and supply noisy machinery the regulation introduced three thresholds first action level 85 dba second action level 90 dba peak action level 140 dba the sound at the ear is represented by a let us discuss first action level 85 dba when you have to raise your voice to be heard at 2 meters the employee must be trained hearing protection must be made available upon request second action level 90 dba when you have to raise your voice to be heard at 1 meter a noise reduction program must be implemented areas must be marked and employees must be provided with hearing protection which must be worn let us discuss now peak action level 140 db noise level this relates to sudden noise the duties are similar to those required by the second action level in this law the duties of employer are to get the noise level assessed by competent people keep a record where exposure is at or above any of the action levels inform personnel that there is a noise hazard inform them of what to do where the exposure needs to be controlled quite in the workplace if this can be done between the first and second action levels provide ear protection ear muffs or plugs and inform workers of the risk of their hearing where the use of hearing protection is compulsory ear protection zones should be marked make sure that everyone who goes into a marked zone even for a short time uses ear protection check to make sure the control measures are working and make sure the equipment you provide is kept in good condition if people work in noise at or above the second or the peak action level the regulations still require the reduction of noise exposure by means other than ear protectors as far as this is reasonably practicable in this law the duties of employees are wear the ear protection ear plugs or ear muffs provided at the second or peak action levels might be reached every entry into an area marked as an ear protection zone use any other equipment the employer provides for example if the machine is mean to have a silencer fitted don't take it off look after any equipment provided under the regulations and report any equipment defect 
Now, let us discuss the control of noise at work regulation 2005. It came into force on 6th April 2006. There were some changes. The lower exposure action values, a daily or weekly personal noise exposure of 80 dBA, a peak sound pressure of 135 dB. You can easily identify 5 dB reduction in the previous threshold value. The upper exposure action values, a daily or weekly personal noise exposure of 85 dB, a peak sound pressure of 137 dB. The exposure limit values, a peak sound pressure of 140 dB. Once there is any risk at site, if you are going to identify any hazard, you have to pass the information. You have to give instruction, training and supervision. Here, what we need to tell you, exposure areas above the lower exposure action values, what we are doing to control risks and exposures, where and how people can obtain hearing protection how to report defects in hearing protection and noise control equipment, duties under the noise regulation 2005, what you should do to minimize the risk, such as the proper way to use hearing protection and other noise control equipment, how to look after it, store it, and where to use it, what we are doing to control risks and exposures, established advisory hearing protection zone, sourcing noise reduction blades and provide hearing protection where and how people can obtain hearing protection freely available from dispensers or production managers how to report defects in hearing protection and noise control equipment report to your supervisor or the manager duties under the noise regulation 2005 where the ear protection provided Use any other equipment the employer provides under the regulations. Look after any equipment provided under the regulation and report any equipment defects or damage as a site supervisor, site foreman, or HSC practitioner. You have to pass the instruction, information to your workforce. For earmuffs, make sure they totally cover your ears fit tightly and there are no gaps around the seal. Don't let hair, jewelry, glasses, hats, etc. interfere with the seal. Try and keep the seal and the insides clean and don't stretch the headband too much. Make sure it keeps its tension. For the use of earplugs, they can be difficult to fit properly. Practice fitting them and get help if you are having trouble, they can look like they are fitted properly. Clean your hands before you fit earplugs and don't share them. Sometimes you use only once. Others can be reused and even washed and make sure you know which type you have and you are using. For semi-inserts or caps, follow the same advice as for earplugs and make sure any headband keeps its tension. This is the use of earplug. You can easily identify the correct and incorrect way. How you can use the earplug. Remember, hearing protection is provided to protect you. If you don't use it, you may lose it. Remember, if in doubt, ask your friends and fellows you are watching safety first. Do you know the signs of hearing loss? Do you ask people to speak louder so that you can hear? Do you have to turn the TV or radio so loud that others complain? There are two types of hearing loss. Temporary hearing loss and permanent hearing loss. Let us discuss one by one. Temporary hearing loss results from short-term exposure to noise and hearing returns when away from the noise. But in the case of permanent hearing loss, 
it results from exposure to a moderate or high level of noise over a long period of time and in this case hearing loss is irreversible or permanent noise induced hearing loss is a gradual loss of hearing sensitivity due to years of exposure to harmful noise let us discuss now the loss prevention strategies while working in a noisy workplace job rotation exposure reduction hearing protection and protection at the receiver end do you know how to control the noise in the path by installation of barriers installation of panels and enclosures and green belt development do you know how to control the noise at source by reducing the noise levels from domestic sectors maintenance of automobiles use of economic instruments control over vibrations low voice speaking prohibition on usage of loud speakers selection of machinery and maintenance of machine if still there is noise and you adopt different strategies then you have to look for the selection of hearing protection devices hearing protection devices selection is based on employee comfort level of noise exposure noise reduction rating of device nrr type of the work being performed and the environmental conditions employee may select hearing protection from a variety of suitable hearing protectors provided by employer the purpose of noise reduction rating is to give an indication of the amount of noise reduction that may be expected with a specific hearing protection device this number is to be used as a general guide only the true amount of noise reduction depends on how the employee inserts the hearing protector into the ear let us discuss now the types of hearing protection devices it might be ear muffs foam insert ear plugs and semi oral ear plugs we will discuss in detail the advantages and disadvantages of ear muffs the advantages of ear muffs are it provide more protection at higher frequencies than ear plugs various noise reduction ratings available durable long lasting can be fitted on hard hat and ear muffs are reusable the disadvantages of ear muffs are higher cost eye glasses can interfere with ear muff feel may be uncomfortable in hot environments and ear muffs must be cleaned before use by another worker now let us discuss the foam insert ear plugs the advantages of foam insert ear plugs are it is more protection at lower frequencies than muffs various noise reduction ratings available in expensive disposable can be custom molded for individual worker and reusable plugs are available the disadvantages of foam insert ear plugs are hands must be cleaned before inserting ear plug improper insertion reduce noise reduction rating value third type of personal protective equipment against noise at work semi oral caps the advantages of semi oral caps are various noise reduction ratings available easy to insert may be used several times and it is ideal for people going in and out of noisy areas the disadvantages of semi oral caps are improper insertion reduced effectiveness more expensive than ear plugs typically have lower noise reduction rating nrr than plugs or muffs dear friends and fellows any personal protective equipment it will be effective once it is fit with the user properly used and cared in the case of hearing protection devices 
the employer must ensure proper initial fitting employer must supervise the correct use of hearing protectors hearing protectors must be replaced as necessary at no cost to employee contact your supervisor hearing protection devices must be cleaned and stored according to the manufacturer's specifications instructions and recommendations hearing protection devices can be cleaned with soap and warm water make sure that they are completely dry before putting them in your ears to protect workers from high level of noise audiometric testing is mandatory it monitors employees hearing over time baseline audiogram must be performed within first 6 months of the work exposure 8 hours time weighted average equal or greater than 85 dba annual audiograms are required each year after baseline audiogram an employer must pay for the cost of each required audiogram do you know why audiometric testing is mandatory to obtain a baseline audiogram for future comparison to identify occupational hearing loss and to identify standard threshold shift sts do you know what is standard threshold shift a change in hearing threshold relative to the baseline audiogram of an average of 10 db or more there are more noise control techniques sound insulation sound absorption vibration damping vibration isolation urban planning public education and awareness and finally let us discuss the total hearing conservation cycle how it starts and how it works it starts from noise exposure assessment a regular measurement of personal hearing reduction of noise exposure tuned personal hearing protection and hearing and noise education if we will adopt this cycle we can protect workers from hearing loss and we can control the noise to an acceptable level in our workplaces and that's it training session related to noise at work is over now if you have any question please ask in the comment section thanks for watching and don't forget to like comment and share the video hope to see you soon with the new hsc tutorial till then take care good luck and allah hafiz